Hello, hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to SC Aviation. And to this video, I know a lot of you have been waiting for. We are going to learn today how to fly with the FMC, or in this case, the Garmin, with this awesome aircraft, which is the Cirrus Jet SF50. So let's go ahead and start with the engines running. There's no problem in doing so. Get full fuel, so that we have plenty of fuel. Set all to working, we are not gonna be using real time. Let's just fly like at midday so that we have flight. And we're gonna take off at... We're gonna take off via runway 12, okay. So, at this point you're not going to click the fly button. You are going to select your waypoints. In this case, I want to make a straight out departure from that runway, direct to this waypoint here. And you're going to start to do those waypoints manually. So after red one, I want to go direct to this one. Then I'm going to go direct to this one. And let's say I'm flying to this airport right here. So I'll then go to this one. And then from there to the approach to the runway. And then the airport at the end. And there we have the route. Now that that's done, you can go ahead and fly. Why is this? Because in an aircraft like the Cirrus, you cannot set your flight plan from the FMC like you do in the 737 or from the from the Garmin itself like you do in the Cessna or all other things. You have to do it just like in the 777 by selecting the waypoints from the navigation page. But now you have to learn how to actually turn on the autopilot and make the airplane fly those waypoints. So that's what we're gonna learn to do today. So, hold the device comfortably. Let me get my volume down. There you go. Okay, so what do you want to do? You want to set up your aircraft from left to right and from top to bottom. So, taking this into account, we're gonna start from the left right here. So, navigation frequencies. If you're gonna be flying any type of ILSS, you want to tune frequencies right here. In this case, we're not flying any type of ILSS, nor VORs, nor NDPs, so we're not gonna tune anything. But if you wanted to, you can do so by clicking just with one finger like this, that moves the flip-flop between NAV1 and NAV2. By clicking the arrow, it gives the standby frequency and the active frequency for NAV1. Let me move something so that you notice it, as you can see. So I actually have four frequencies, two standby and two actives one. But which is the absolute active, the one that you select with the flip-flop. So in this case, if we wanted to have 111.7 as standby and as the active one, let's say 112.3, for example, 112.75, you will do this. Go up and change the flip-flop as you do so. So in this case, we're gonna keep with 117, 111.7, but you don't have to care about that. Then you go to the communications frequency. Here in x there is no ATC, so you're not gonna do anything with that. Though, if you want to fly more accurately, just go ahead and search your frequencies and tap them. And as you climb, change them. Again, works exactly the same. One touch, flip flop, two fingers, move the big numbers, one finger, move the small, the small numbers, and the arrow changes them. Then let's go more down here. You have your heading select. In this case, we're not gonna be using the heading, but you want to match the heading, your current heading with the heading bug, as you can see here, how I'm moving it from left to right. Even if you're not flying in the heading select mode, you want to keep it aligned. Why? Because if suddenly the GPS autopilot disconnected, you already have your heading selected so that you can just change to heading select and don't have any kind of trouble. Good. Now, going right here to the course, there you also are gonna select your course you are flying some type of ILS, but here I want to also align it with my current heading. Then go in here down, you're gonna select your cruising altitude. So in this case, I want to cruise at 5,000 feet of altitude. So I'm gonna select 5,000 here. You can select 
all altitudes up to almost an infinite flight level. You can see you can select 4, 6, 50. I think you can go even more up. But of course, you in the real life, the airplane's never going to get you to such high altitudes. So let me just grab it and take it down. And as I said, we're going to be going to 5,000 feet of altitude. So let's go ahead and select 5,000 here. Awesome. Once 5,000 is set, this is a key step. You want to go right here to this button and make sure it's nor on F1, nor on F2, but on GPS. When you click it, you have NAV1, NAV2, or GPS. You want GPS, that's gonna follow your Garmin. If you click NAV1, you're gonna be using this one. If you click NAV2, you're gonna be using the other one. As you can see here, when I do the flip-flop, we got NAV1 and NAV2. But the green one is the one active, as you can see the green changes clearly. But when it's on GPS, none of them. Cool. Remember that this flip-flop tells you which one you are changing, but the green one is which one is active. So let it, let's let it on GPS. Important thing. Now going here to this panel, you're gonna leave the battery on, the battery two on, the generator one on, the generator two on, the strobe lights as soon as you are in the runway. We are right now in the runway, so, that is, so those go on. Then on the lights, if you have re received your takeoff clearance, in this case we have, so go on and navigation lights are almost always oxygen. We're not going to use it. It was going to be as we are going to be below 10,000 feet. Fresh air. Yeah, let's get some fresh air. Pa pilot heat. It's not pilot heat. I know you tend to read pilot, but it's not pilot. It's pitot. Click that. That's going to heat up some tubes right here below the wing, as you can see there. And the objective of those are to measure the airspeed. By enabling the pitot heat, you prevent that those tubes get frozen. Engine inlet heat, nope. Wing surface, nope. Window heat, yes. Custom slider and custom slider, no. Nope. Okay, now this is it. What about how to engage the autopilot? So this is the autopilot panel here in the series. You got heading right here. This heading controls the same one as you can see there in DPFD as the other button and the altitude does the same. So you have two ways of controlling the altitude right here or right here. But be careful because if you miss something, that altitude will reset just like here. Because when you tap it, it selects your current altitude. If you want to change it, you have to tap it here. You can see it's different. In the middle it's green, it's green. In the other part is is yellow. So let's go ahead and change it again to 5000. As you can see now we have a 7 there. Yeah, I know it happens when you click the green button and you are not on zero. So for that there's a little trick. You're gonna select your barometric altitude until you see that it's absolute zero like this. Then click again the green and move it until you have a complete zero, just like I'm gonna do right now. Like this. I'm gonna try again to see what we get. We got a two, Maybe more down, oh, just one more. You gotta be very, very, very careful with those movements. There you go. Click it again. If it's not working, well, no problem, but Mine is zero, zero, 001 is acceptable, just one of difference. Now you can go ahead and select your altitude again, which in this case is going to be 5,999. Cool. Now, here you have some buttons. This is the autopilot heading. By this, the autopilot will fly on heading select mode. This is the navigation mode. You have to, you want to have this one enabled when you fly. We're going to see it later. This is your approach mode. You want to have this one if you are going to fly an ILS. This is the autopilot engage or disengage button. 
This is the flight director. The flight directors are those magenta things in the PFD, as you can see. They make you able to fly the airplane manually, but with some kind of vectors. That's why they are called flight directors. This is the wing leveler. By doing so, in any case, the wings will level, as you can see they're under flight directors. This is the yaw damper. That one's very important because it's gonna control the rudder automatically. This is the flight level change. This thing is also important because by doing so, you're gonna climb at a certain speed. So the airplane is gonna climb as much as it can without accelerating or decelerating. So you click it and then with this button, look at my airspeed there on the PFD. You can see it increases. So if I want to climb at 60 knots, I put it here. If I want to climb at 180 knots, then I put it here. And the airplane is gonna aim for that speed. We are gonna use this as we climb today. Vertical speed, well, it's vertical speed. In this case, the this button changes from changing the, the speed for flight level change to changing your vertical speed. As you can see on the right part of my PFD, we now have 100, 200, 300, as you can see here, and this 300 there. Cool. And last but not least, the altitude. This one, again, sets your current altitude, so be careful with that. Let's go ahead and change again to 5,000. Here we were lucky as it was not on zero exact. So 5,000. Okay, so one more thing. You want to be very careful because as I have tried this autopilot panel, the trim has changed. You can see it's now on 100%. So we're gonna turn off the autopilot and change that trim because if not, we're gonna have a very unpleasant takeoff. We're gonna leave it at minus 20. We're gonna go ahead and add power and take off. What are we gonna do as soon as we take off? We are gonna first press the navigation button so that we fly on BNAV, and then we will press the flight level change button so that we climb. All right, let's do it. Mid power. Let me get my sound a little bit so that you don't. Check, stabilized, Full power. Full power set. And target your takeoff level. More or less 180 knots. I like to rotate at that speed. Eighty, one hundred, there you go. Rotate. Okay, we're airborne. So click nav, fly level change, or a speed. We're gonna clear to climb at 150 knots. So, how's it working? Uh, first gear up. As you can see here, we are flying on nav navigation mode, which means that the aircraft is following the Garmin, as you can see right here with this green nav, the altitude is on yellow, indicating that we are legs gonna be on altitude hold when we reach it. The flight level change FLC is in green, meaning we are climbing at not a certain vertical speed, but at a certain speed. What does that mean? That we're gonna climb as much as we can without slowing or accelerating. We have the yaw damper here, which means that the rudder is being controlled automatically. We have the flight director on, the autopilot on, and SRV, to be honest, I have no idea what it means. So as you can see, the airplane is trying to maintain 150 knots while it's an autopilot. So looking at our map, we're trying to follow the waypoints. We're going at right now direct to this one, VK Zulu. And this is how it works. What's gonna happen when we reach 5,000 feet, guys? This airplane sadly has, let me first do a flyby here. Sadly, it has no auto throttle. So you won't be able to control the speed at your cruising altitude, but you can more or less manage it with with the with the like with the throttle at a specific uh, like let's call it yeah specific RPM. 
So we are now leveling off at 5,000 feet. The airplane missed it a little bit. Why is that? You can see the trim is at 100% is because when we took off, we let the elevators too high. So what's the solution for that? You want to recalibrate your controls again, disconnect the autopilot, being careful, then trim, retrim the aircraft, just like I'm doing right now, to a comfortable position, and then turn back again to navigation. But at this point, the airplane is on more or less flight level change, but it will very soon be on altitude hold. So you want to aim for the speed here. Let's we're gonna cruise at two to zero knots. So let's aim for that speed by the by the time the airplane arrives to five thousand feet. Okay, we're here at five thousand. The airplane is we're close to five thousand. Let me get the power down as we want to descend. Remember this flight level change mode only manages the elevator so that the airplane descends or climbs but keeping a speed. In this case it's trying to keep 200. So as soon as we get to 220, sorry it was 220 not 200, it is going to start going down as you can see here on our vertical speed. When we reach 5000, which we're going to do so, to do so very soon, the airplane is going to level off. Now you may ask, what is this rolling? Well, the airplane is a bit unstable while flying in navigation mode. So you're first going to get a bit of rolls before the airplane is stabilized, but there is no problem in that. It will stabilize soon. Okay. Anytime this altitude should get on green as it has just done and at this point is that you have to be careful To manage your throttle manually because your airplane does not longer have control of it No matter what this speed says there. So let's keep it like a bit up There you go, and it's more or less stabilized and this is how you fly navigation on this series guys I hope you enjoyed any question that you have any comment, any suggestion, feedback, everything is appreciated. There I also leave the link for the Discord server anywhere down in the description. So go ahead, chat there. It's very nice. Thank you very much for seeing this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.